bright and brilliant jewelry community welcome to this second part of the yin yang making now we want to make a pavé which is obviously one of the nicest thing in high jewelry making it's an old tradition well it's not so old historically it's about a hundred years old so at the jewelry history scale which is roughly 80 80 thousand years a hundred years is very young the irony of that is that the pavé which is covering a jewel with little stones little stones a stone shouldn't be bigger than let's say two millimeters round or square but that's another story generally it's round stones which is funny because a pavé is a square rock that's used to make a pavé street and that's why in jewelry it says pavé the pavé comes from the stones from the streets that used to be made also pretty a long time ago but in many countries it's still a tradition to make pavé streets well anyway um, let's start the pavé because I need this done like yesterday and okay so this is ready yes I want to keep this guy we have this yeah. but I want to work on these so let's keep that so lucky for us and that's why also uh, I wanted to do this design it's symmetric so I just need to make it work on this side and then I can copy it on the other side All right I have I have to make I'm going to apply this now I'm going to copy I'm going to copy the white diamond because I will have white diamonds around the black diamond now size 2 let's copy paste here so generally I start with 2 because it's my favorite size for many things okay now before we start we need to prepare there are very nice concepts that you can use to make your pavé making journey a lot easier in blender and that's why I like also making a lot of pavés using Blender. So we're going to bring the cursor right here, add a circle. Uh, let's put 60 here. So it's not too sharp, rather smooth. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Extrusion Z here. First, I'm going to make the cutter for the light. When you can, and it should be almost every time, you need to drill holes for each stone so that you get light from the back, from the inside, to each little stone. If you don't believe me it's very simple it's not because I say it it's just like very years of jewelry history to just prove it well first drilling removes metal the jewel gets lighter you get it you get to use less precious metal remember you need to avoid using too much metal so that the jewel doesn't get too expensive for bad reasons so it removes weight it brings a lot of light to each stone and it looks better 
while then it looks way better so just do it maybe one day you'll, you'll understand why okay um, so the drill The depth and sizes of the drill depend a lot on the size of the stones and the design. So let me. Right. There are many types of cutters, many types. All right, I close this one. So this is a basic cutter. Um, let's call it cutter. I'm going to bring a material, yeah. Put a special material to do a cutter. You'll understand why later, and you'll thank me later. So this is the cutter. It's going to, we're going to join this with the diamond. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, this and that. Perfect. Control J. So it gets joined with the diamond. But that's not all we want. Um, Let's make a test because what we want is face uh, snap width center ring rotation and it might be good uh, activate the snap move rotate and uh, we well, should be good to go right here okay perfect so as you see the center is at this very small orange point so we get this which is correct because we want the stone to be a bit higher than the surface just slightly higher then checking that the cutter is going to work okay but like i said in the first part so if you haven't seen the first part you might check it out I also want it to be a honeycomb pavé. A honeycomb means that on the inside you have hexagonal cutters making a very nice looking honeycomb effect. It helps removing more metal and also making the jewel look better. So it's also an old tradition uh, and it also still brings more light but also like always avoiding flat surfaces or plain surfaces is something very important in the manufacturing of the jewels right so here we are and that means that before we go here and lose our horizontal axis I'm going to create D so for that let's add a circle with six vertices <laughs> miracle this is an hexagon uh, but instead of making it here let's bring the cursor here already centered so bring again circle six size should be good now we're going to create let's keep this and that this goes below all right so i need to move my hexagon cutter and we're going to well, close it, extrude it, 
here. Then another extrusion here, and this should be smaller, like here. This should work. We'll have to check that, or maybe a bit smaller. Now, before I move forward, let's check face orientations, right? <laughs> this mesh normal outside. Okay, perfect. So this, I'm also using a cutter material, but I'm going to duplicate it. Let's, let's call it exact cutter or something like that. So again, on the material, I'm also, okay, so now something important, there I have the, the level, the mid level of the first cutter, that's what I need to check first. So before we proceed, I'm going to join this. And you know what, maybe here. <laughs> now, let's have a look at everybody here. Let's activate the snap and let's make a quick test. Okay, we get this. Okay, it's going to be pretty good, but I'm going to lower very slightly. Make a couple of things that we want. Hey, come on. Okay, there I'm going to make a shading smooth faces on the cutter and now I'm going to adjust this cutter a bit I'm going to make it slightly smaller and bring it here in the middle I'm just to be sure this is long enough not too long today we're just going to make it like this should be pretty okay should be pretty good all right Let's make a quick test with a couple of. I'm going to copy this. Shift D. Shift D. Then I will be using Alt D. So obviously, at first, the hexagonal cutters won't be working at all. I don't know. It's not too bad. Obviously, we'll have to rotate that, but it's okay. Okay, it's pretty good. We can start with this. Okay, we need to move the original a bit outside or whatever. Now, let's turn on this now and let's start to work on distributing the stones on this part of the engineering all right let's do an add d and i hope i won't forget to make alt d instead of shift d just let me check position all right, perfect here. Good. Now, so there are many strategies on how to distribute the stones for a pave because uh, you can choose to make 
to use varying size for the stones when you need the smaller stone to fit somewhere etc etc but okay here I need to adjust my distances also you might want a symmetric pave or not etc etc here I choose to go around the big central stones it's not obvious that it might work better or not maybe it won't work better because I could choose to start at the tip here down here and start going up and maybe I could go following the edges of the shape like the drop shape that has the half of the yin yang here I could and then go on the inside but well intuition experience might tell you that it might be better to start around the bigger stone in the center so that's why I choose directly to start like this but sometimes you might have to try several solutions and obviously there like I always say that's why you want to be a jewelry maker with a lot of experience on making jewels because obviously then when you need to manufacture the pavé the honeycomb and all that well if you're a designer with no experience in jewelry making there are many many things you won't have any idea about what you're doing and that's not good you won't be such a good jewelry designer that i would say it's obvious but it's funny because millions of people around the world sadly and badly are told or believe that you can design jewelry without being a jewelry maker first become a jeweler a jewelry maker for hopefully a couple of years or more then become a jewelry designer anyway okay so we have this all right it's going to be interesting now well we also have to get lucky a bit but I'm going to make okay here we also can choose to alternate or not okay so here I'm going to go with the line of the stones obviously okay here I want to have more stones on that side it's good enough then three we'll have the prongs ah, because after the stones we have to set the stones with very small grains prongs little spheres that are going to little spheres of metal that are going to set the stones you always need something a part of metal that is going to grab the stones set the stone into place okay so so far so good here i might have okay let's go pick more curved here
This this one must be closer to here, so I need to bring this here. So here on the edges, well anyway it's it's the fall off curve on the side. I will be bringing stones there. So obviously if you choose using smaller stones going closer to the edges you might start using smaller stones but then beware that stones don't come in just any size we again well no this time the stone sizes is something that again you learn a lot better in practicing jewelry making because you need to be a gemstone buyer and you then you will know that some sizes exist and some other sizes don't exist and you would say with me you would say okay it's obvious <laughs> but obviously it's not so obvious and that's one of the problems when designing Sometimes you need specific size. You could say, well, I have those gemstones cut at my specific size. Gemstone cutting is a lot of work and it's very troublesome. Gemstones break very easily or too easily, even diamonds, even diamonds. So, you should avoid having to request your own gemstone cut uh, for bad reasons but obviously for artistic reasons then it's very different because you can have then your stone shape by a uh, gemstone artist and that's another story all right it's a way different story all right go around okay here here that means that I must that's a must there obviously these can fit must fit so I might have to join because obviously on a distance very small distances but multiplied so many times um, make a huge distance so it might I might have one stone too much now but I need to readjust all the stones around obviously they cannot overlap they can just touch on the edge that is possible in real life okay I don't need to bring a lot of space like this coming in but no overlapping no overlapping nobody overlaps here
so now we're almost fitting there I have more distance a bit and don't forget that we're talking about less than way less than millimeters in distance between the stones we have decimals just a couple of decimals between stones so on screen and that's also why you need to manufacture the designs you make in 3d you need to print them and manufacture to understand many many things um, that on screen it looks like a huge gap between all the stones in fact is a hair or sometimes less than a hair thick so these distances are very very small okay i think we're going somewhere so it's pretty nice to start and already go somewhere why are we on frame two we're not framing any anything here okay so I'm going to keep I'm going to start on this side. Alright. Okay, so something that you need to know, like I said, if you use another software, uh, if you would use a specialized, specialized jewelry software, uh, making the pave would be different, but it, it wouldn't be necessarily a lot faster. And there's a technical reason to that. And that's why we are here working with Blender also. When you're making custom jewelry and you want a custom pave, which means that the mathematical distribution of the stones, the automatic distribution of the stones is obviously not so mathematical. I think you understand. If you don't understand, I'm going to explain it more again. Well, with another software, you would have a tool to automatically try to distribute the stones. We have a very custom and special surface. What you would notice right away with any software, even with a very expensive one, the distribution would fail anytime because you would have to draw a lot of curves to make it concentric to the big center stone by example in this occasion the thing is that distributing the stones would be Well, you would have, the thing is that you would have to distribute the stones manually anyway. So the process would be very similar to what I'm doing now. In Blender, it's pretty good to do it because the snap tool works very well. Okay. So. Here I need one more stone again, so everybody get closer because I need just one more stone here. So again, like I said, it seems that I need a lot of space to make this other gemstone fit. But if you remove a little um, the spacing between all the other stones we might get sometimes you can't get that distance which is all the fun in distributing the 
gemstones. Because it's not so easy and there's a very nice sense of achievement here and that's why this is a more advanced level jewelry design because there's more you need to know a lot you need to know to make a nice looking pavé Generally, I make it look very simple. Actually, here it's it's really nice. Uh, it's really nice here. So here I need to start right there. And okay, now it's more about the arc going from. Well, here on the screen from left to right, this is now I'm done going around the main stone, which is a pretty good thing. It's a pretty good thing. Here we might have yeah. those ones are a bit close to the edges but we have enough distance to the edge here we don't but I need that one to be here so I'm going to adjust I'm going to adjust a bit here I'm very slightly here this one okay this one can go a bit down there. Mm. this one is too far now we need a small distance to the edge okay here we'll I need to avoid touching you can be very close very very close you can be at the edge of the next stone but no more okay here I might make them a little bit closer so that the last stone so that the last stone well there's not that much space space to win we're just seeing if i could bring this one a bit higher but nah, it's very slight very very slightly anyway so here we're good to proceed so making this let's say by hand in blender is a nice process because like I say every time they tell me but you could do that faster you can do that faster the concept and the method I'm showing here is very efficient and it's very interesting and it works it works steadily and every time because like I said when you have a custom design your custom pave well almost every time you need to work it by hand in any software all right so all right here i want to be fitting obviously the more i go forward the more i need to remove a stone now and then because obviously each time less stone are fitting on the width of the design i try to go and make it precise almost right away you could just start 
distributing stones very quickly and then adjust them but when you have many stones here we have a decent amount of, of stone on this design this is also what makes it attractive they're not too many okay here now here I need to start hmm and we to start on that side so generally I always start from the same side to adjust the stones but this time I justified it from the right side and not from the left side obviously it's working because well generally you get you develop a sense of the space you have on that surface on that volume uh, when well the more you design the more you develop that ability to sense the volume and the spaces that's a very important point of everything uh, what we're doing here the software doesn't matter that much yes even if we love blender for many reasons um, we need to learn concepts that transcend any software and that's 3d thinking the 3d scape we need to learn methods and concept to be at home in a 3d scape so you need to train your mind with this is a very good exercise to do that but like i already said in other videos you can play 3d video games like a flight simulator things like that or obviously any 3d game even sure uh, any game that makes you behave in a 3d world a very good game for that is like titanfall i know many games are military oriented games but you have more uh, you can play zelda the new versions are 3d mario mario kart and all of that because it's training for your brain in to a 3d scape okay well and then you'll see that a lot of things that I'm doing with Blender on the channel, the reasons why I do I do it without add-ons, without some other tools that many people might say uh, are more efficient or blah blah blah, and why I don't care that much I do care but I don't care that much or like I say better uh, generally I do care but I care differently I care about other factors or I'm observing different aspects of what we're making and why we're making it so it has a lot more thinking thoughts to it and um, this is not just random uh, people might think that I do this like for personal uh, caprice like just because I want it like that uh, and I'm using this slow method just because I want to and that there are no technical uh, or manufacturing reasons or, or artistic reasons that make the concept and methods I'm showing you on the channel well actually better well guess what <laughs> funny thing and irony also because it doesn't look efficient if you if you grab the video or the channel just like this on the fly 
Uh, at first, you very probably will think, man, this is way too tedious or useless. There's an add-on for that and blah, blah, blah. But that's just at first. Because then when you listen to me talking about jewelry history and uh, other concepts, you will start understanding why we are here doing this like that and in a very good way. If it wouldn't be so, we wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here with Blender and my channel making all this just for fun. I said that having fun is really important. Here I'm having a lot of fun making this pave. So let's move forward. Let's so here we're a bit close to the edge. But uh, no, this one is a bit too close to the edge. Otherwise, uh, it's pretty good. The only thing that's not so cool is this here on this side. And guess what? I am going to use smaller stones. <laughs> Even if I said very clearly at the beginning that I wasn't going to use smaller stones, well, you might find yourself in a position where you might have to think your strategy again. Here on the side, on this side there, uh, there's too much space. We can obviously fill that space with prongs, um, but the gap is too big here so I will have to work with different sizes of stones and actually even here yeah that one well I keep explaining let's let's finish the pave because we need to bring the prongs so here I'm going to this is the last stone here we can't go any further but that's already really nice that's already really nice okay move all these guys here anyway that's uh and because the pavés came out uh well very good but not because i did it <laughs> maybe also that that's just the fun part People who don't know me and don't don't commit the, the bad mistake of thinking that you know me because you see me in uh, on the channel and things like that and things that I write or not. It's like people who thinks, think they know actors because they see them in movies and on TV and all that. It happens to all of us to, to, think, to, to think that we know somebody because of movies or TV but no you don't and we don't and I don't either nobody does that's when you just start uh, going crazy a bit all right but uh, in fact I laugh at myself a lot so when you grab some videos just like you know parts of videos and you listen to me you don't get the bigger picture that I always end up laughing at myself because that's very good for the brain and your emotions and your entire life I don't take myself too seriously obviously when we're working it's very serious you know that stone there that prong there blah 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 that thickness there but um, I laugh a lot about myself and even more than you might think. Okay, now this is super good. We can have a look a bit also at if you want to count the stones, it's you can do that because we have. All this list so 114 but we have 
one less. So it's 113 stones on one side of the yin. Well, and yang. So this would be the yin or the yang in this design. But we still need a couple of. So let me check something. The rotate. Let's put the scale also affected by the magnet for a second. So here, dimension, let's try at 1.5. Well, that's perfect. Let's copy the scale here. So now I need to make these guys fit here on the out side. Let's have a look. And making this little fellas fit on the outer edge here. Okay, these guys I want at 125. Ah, okay, so a reason to laugh with me is that at the beginning I very clearly stated that I wouldn't be using different size for the stones. And here we are using different sizes for the stones. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously we are. Okay, so um, are we going to... Huh. So 125 um, for diamonds that's a good size it's very small obviously but they're not at all the smallest at all or way smaller than 125 but 125 is a very good reference size so we have this um, I wait to have a look. Also on the inside. This is the outside, <laughs> and there the inside. Because here on the inside, I might get a couple of smaller stones. Well, here we're fitting one. Then yes, might maybe just one here and there. And here, this is going to just move. Okay, this one. All right. Yeah. Then there's also an artistic factor, which is hard to achieve, uh, so that the distribution looks really harmon harmonious. Yeah. You know what I mean. Okay, then. So here also don't um, mistake the cutter for the stone because sometimes the cutter don't really fit, the head of the cutter don't really fit. But, um, But the stone does. Okay. And the last stone, then this is the last stone here. So, as, okay, we need, no, sorry. Okay, artistic, the artistic side. Here we have gaps. We can see the gaps here and there. And that's ugly. That's why I started talking about the artistic side of the pavé. Because 
if the distances are not even in some way because it's not systematic either it's not because because you have even distribution that your pave is going to look necessarily good if it's too even sometimes on something that it's is not straight like this design if it's too even in some ways it might look bad all right so but here I, I have a couple of gaps that make this look bad and I need to fill them the problem is the problem is I have one gap and two, I have these are the worst gaps we have now and that's just too bad and here the I need to make this a bit more even ah, okay so what we might mm, let me have a look let's remove these huh. sometimes replacing sizes with other sizes sometimes <laughs> not too bad mm. I need to fill these two gaps and then it will be perfect so one millimeter stones yeah I think that's going to be the solution here then obviously I will have to just Okay, so I need a bit more space here. I don't have that one, no, I do have. Okay, top view. So obviously the cutters make it look a bit different because what we're seeing is a cutter. It changes the way it looks. All right. But this is great because it worked. Okay. We can also have a look on the inside. Then obviously on the inside, we, we're going to have specific work. Um, but it's great. It's great, great, great. So finally, I did use different sizes. We have two millimeters, 1.5, 125, and one millimeters in diameter, round. For diamonds, we have no problems with these sizes at all. This is really good. Okay. But we need the prongs, we need the cuts, we need a lot of things still. Um, let's move forward and let's start I'm going to take all these guys. I'm going to make single users all the object and data. Then I'm going to join them like this. And let's go to edit mode here. And that's why I use materials for the cutter because I take the material and put select and I have the cutters. Now I take them out with P selection. 
and we're good for the first cut here I'm going to go on the metal part with the boolean fast and I'm going to cut here now let's have a look I'm going to hide these guys sorry and this is great this is great up till is okay here we have ooh, we have a couple of problems here we have five to correct I have the original cutter so I'm going to copy it and place it again so now I need to avoid the overlap here here okay these are pretty good now the last one well not the last last one the tip okay was that one more here and here at first I had slightly bigger stones here but apparently they didn't fit well okay we're going to make this as a group well to join these and this one too join all right so I'm going to make the boolean of the the big group. Go to boolean, past, and let's select the cutters. So this is um, this is good. Now I moved and corrected the five cutters that were making a problem. But here I need to select the cutters, extract them, and now I can make the second boolean fast and select the remaining cutters. Let's have a look at the correction. It's now perfect. So these are the first cutter cutters. Let's make it look better with the auto smooth. All right. Now I need to have a look at the exact cutters to make the extra cuts on the inside. So we have to show everybody back up again. So now that it's working okay, what I can do is that I can. I'm going to remove these booleans because there are two and I don't want two, I just want one. I'm going to take these cutters. the isolated ones and these ones and I'm going to call them uh, normal cutters the first ones now let's make the boolean fast selecting here so we're good let's see remove them from the render at once okay this looks really good that's what we want to see for a pavé and we're still missing the prong beware's beware's they're still 
work to do. But first, I want to make the cutters work. So we have now to come here. So now this and that, let's join again. Because here, and that's why I use the material for the exact cutters, select and extract. Now, we're going to make a test, a simple test. We need the Boolean, fast, fast. And this time we're going to remove these. Okay. It's working pretty well. I'm just going to check. I need to remove these four, five, six, seven, eight at first. All right. So let's do that. Four, these two. So here we don't even see them anymore. Perfect. I'm going to check these guys. So let's put the name here. Let's go again. Let's do the second Boolean fast with the exact cutters. Here. And let's have a look. This one might be a bit close. All right, I'm going to remove let me see something. Ah, no, this just don't. Ah, obviously, I'm easy. Okay, I think the small ones, I'm going to systematically remove them. So let's make all the one millimeters on the, on the sides. I'm going to remove them. They're not. Generally, obviously, the hexagon cutters would rotate with the design, with the gemstones, to make the honeycomb. But today, I think the distribution of the hexagon is very efficient already the only thing i'm going to, change, to correct still is let's have a look like i already said here we're going to remove all the one millimeter exact cutters they're not necessary they don't make good cuts they break the they break the they break the design let's say because they make bad cuts on the sides okay uh, this intermediate one I think very good so these ones I'm going to remove them they're at the end uh, well also because anyway you won't need them the bigger ones they're not touching, so let's take these out. All right, so these guys, they go. Now, ah, funny, I didn't remove the. All right, so we have this. It's pretty good. 
I might adjust. Uh, okay, I might adjust that side. Just the big cutters. Okay, let's remove. This time, let's remove this. So now that I know which ones I need to correct. Let's go have a look here. Let's remove the snap, <laughs> obviously. All right, let's adjust these. Don't forget to And select that's nice okay and so we just on the z-axis in this design it's enough which makes it Quite amazing. Let's check again, Boolean. So um, there's not that much correct, so it's a great. There's one thing I'm going to try is to have the cutters grow a bit because the space between them is just a bit too big and that's a bit sad because the cuts and the pavé are amazing perfect wonderful fantastic looks great all you want but so let's remove the boolean again no problem it's better removing it than just not showing it so we have these cutters and what we're going to do is that we're going to set all of them here we are going to put individual origins which is very practical and now I can roll the cutters somewhere here all right and now let's make that famous boolean it's the one i've added and removed so many times here we go and let's have a new look oh this is great there's just one or two overlaps so it's this one and I need to move also the other side all right this is great now all right now there's just there's one cutter this cutter comes too close to the edge and it touches touches the edge and it looks bad because it's the only one doing that so I'm correcting it also now boolean fast the fast option works better most of the time which is very interesting okay so now I think I corrected everything that was affecting the look of these honeycomb cutters on the inside Okay, I already said it, but I, I want to talk about that again. The 
only difference that we could make but in this occasion it's very good looking like this is that you may want to rotate the hexagons to follow the design uh, it's a bit harder a bit more just a bit more work <laughs> it might be a lot more work sometimes but in this occasion in this design luckily because yeah obviously you need to be a bit lucky when you when you work it looks amazing like this ooh, ooh look at this look at this right so like i said the sense of achievement um obviously we're proud we we must be proud of what we're doing i'm going to make a new collection great now i'm going to add small sphere i'm going to make it at 0.6 Let's have a look. Okay, 0.6 is going to be great. Now this is this needs to be white gold here. And obviously we need to start make it smooth. And don't forget to make it like this well not too much but also we're going to test it so obviously it doesn't um, go down on the other side it can happen sometimes you'll have to correct that so avoid that all right okay we have this and uh, Let's turn on the snap and let's have a look at how it behaves. All right, it goes down too much. So what we need to do, well, one way of doing it is that we're going to move everybody up, actually almost at the middle. Yeah, at the middle somehow. You don't need an absolute precision on this one. All right, now let's have a look again at how it behaves behaves the snap is on now uh, okay so um, for rendering this is good for manufacturing it could be a bit higher so i need it to be a bit more manufactured oriented so i'm going to move it out a bit more like this because when it's a first design and it's a design that um, they ask me to manufacture so snap this guy let's remove the snap this is the original so I'm going to do the same as uh, the first one the original I keep out and then I start snapping here all right so here I'm seeing that some gemstones are slightly overlapping but that in real life it won't matter much the problem now is that the cuts are already into place but that won't affect the real life stones because in real life we can adjust that because the scale is very very small if it would be if it would be oh sorry if we would have bigger stones and different types of settings it would be a different it would be a different problem all right i moved them slightly the cuts well, I won't move them. Well, I could move them though, but no, it's okay. 
Now let's go with the prongs. Let's go with the prongs. I'm going to. So um, the other day that I made a presentation on the world uh, blender meter day, and people were laughing at me. So I guess who's laughing now? That will always happen. Um, uh, many people don't know all the work I'm doing. They were laughing because I wasn't using the array modifier for just a line of prongs. Luckily or cleverly, I answered that very quickly. The array stops working when you need to distribute prongs. Uh, when when you when you do this job uh, every day for twenty years, you would know that right away. And uh, well, it's obviously it denotes that you're not designing much because you know what tools work and what tools works faster so um, well they always try to put the shame on me and shame on them shame on them because it's ignorance when it looks the way around. That's why I wanted to make a yin yang also. Um, you know, people trying to make you look like a fool, but I'm here to stay, people. I'm here to stay. So distributing the prongs is a very repetitive task. There are also artistic aspects of the spacing so it's not so easy all right so it's going so far so good here we need hmm. all right let's move here some prongs are overlapping much but I prefer to add sometimes just maybe one or two prongs too much because it's very easy to remove them once uh, in, in the manufacturing process. You can get rid of these, then make the mold and everybody's happy. Here we have some decorative prongs here and there. So these ones. Now oh, this one is good.
So here also we have many different strategies for distributing the prongs. You can go for an hexagonal distribution, a pentagonal distribution, depends well on many factors, sometimes even just your mood. And also, like I was saying at the beginning, um, in a jewelry dedicated software, you would have a tool to help you help you distribute the prongs. But also, as you would know very quickly, when doing custom designs like this one, you would, the tool will help you. And then it's funny because you need to correct what the tools does. So that's why generally I'm not so much in favor of automated systems because they're faster, but they're also faster to make mistakes. So then you need to correct all those mistakes. So instead of doing it right the first time, it's like doing it wrong and then correcting it. So your work instead of really making the pavé is using the automated tool, automated tool, automatic, <laughs> automatic tool, whatever, and then correct it. I don't know, sometimes I prefer to just do it right, right away. So my job is to do it right, right away and not become just a tool corrector because I find that well I don't say bad word bad words on this channel so I wouldn't say it's not clever to become a tool corrector because you know, it's like you make a robot and the robot makes the work for you, but it makes it not so good. So you need to correct what the robot does. I rather have not have a robot in that case. And uh, sometimes I talk about artificial intelligence and well, obviously it's, I'm not against technological progress at all I mean here I'm using one of the best softwares for 3d which blender is is a very good software for 3d making or anything 3d related in fact so uh, it's not that but I think some people don't really think things true and that's when it becomes a problem So I'm rather for a more clever usage of technologies when the technology really makes us win something. But always remember also, you win something, you lose something. And sometimes you lose freedom. Sometimes you might lose time, you may lose money but you may lose freedom. So you choose what you're ready to lose. Many people are ready to lose their freedom for robots. They want robots to think for them and not in a good way in the sense that to think things that are so obvious and um,
in a way uh, that using those technology ends up being counterproductive and you know that when you produce a lot make a lot of things I've been printing for the last or, or using 3d printing technology for a long time and uh, one let's say uh, 3d printing is good for a lot of things but there's something that they're not talking about that much resin printing is very toxic the resins are very toxic and it's bad for your health uh, the weeks that I had to print every day I would get sick systematically because of the resin using masks using vents all you want the resin is very toxic so like I said one good thing one bad thing that's also this is one of the reason why this year uh, I don't want to be printing so much anymore and I don't plan to be printing much more in the next years because for me like I said and it's funny I started teaching 3D in 2004 so that's a long way back and we started having access to 3D printing technologies in Mexico at my scale in 2008 later I bought a printer at first I would send the printing to businesses that had the printers obviously it was way more cost efficient so well there are many many things that I've been through and uh, obviously I can't I don't have time to share all of that uh, or all my biography and why this or why that so many people come to me and they tell me that what I teach is not efficient there are better tools I should use these tools and blah 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 they don't know the whole story so and then it gives the impression that I don't care or that I don't know or whatsoever believe me I'm doing all this because I was there I was there already many many times many many times and so many times that you start thinking better differently you want other things new things new way of doing things and the funny thing is now that after all the treaty uh, after all the teaching I've done in jewelry making and all I'm coming back to the roots which is doing things by hand because it's better for your health your brain your life in general artistically and technically you have a freedom obviously even soldering or is toxic in in its own right <laughs> let's say like that so the 
but is it's also a question of, of levels i think resin is too toxic at least for me or it became so and i don't know it's like you you come to a point where you consider that you've achieved all well all the dreams all you dreamed of and there's nothing more after some experiences there's nothing more but repeating the same and the same experience and that's something I didn't want it I don't like repeating experiences good or bad and life never asked me to repeat I'm not a repeater I am a creative person so I need to create new experiences for me but not only for me for people around me and um, And I don't know some some flows, workflows, life flows, flow like in flow, not flow like flowless. <laughs> Sounds the same when I when I say it, but flow like or flaws. But it's funny, the flow, the flow like the flow of the water. You want some things to flow a certain way and to feel a certain way when you're making uh, jewels by example or designs here like right now i'm feeling good i'm feeling great right? i'm feeling amazing because i woke up early uh no not because i woke up early on the contrary maybe even you would feel i would feel not i don't like waking up so early but one of my cats always wakes me up because well she wants to eat and it's she's my so cute alarm clock in the morning because almost every day at five and well i need to wake up for other reasons i need to wake up early so but then generally i go back to bed maybe grab something to eat a quick breakfast or something like that but um, where was I <laughs> here completing the prongs it's really fun to to see how and like I said in another software you would distribute the prongs very quickly very very quickly but then you would have to come back and check every prong and become crazy checking every prong instead of placing at once every prong where it belongs you would need to come back and check the prongs one by one and become crazy checking the prongs one by one so for that and many reasons i enjoy making this in blender huh. okay, like i said here we have some slight overlappings but that's why also i prefer to to add maybe one or two prongs too much in some 
places maybe you know like here and there because always go and check the entire design do it early because suddenly you can you can spot a mistake because of the the snap sometimes it snaps on something else so yeah i was saying that um feeling so uh feeling feeling yeah it's important to feel so uh, obviously people were like you know when you start working when you're young when you're studying uh, people are going to tell you what you feel doesn't matter uh, at all uh, you need to keep your emotions out of your study life of your working life of your life basically because it's like when you're working you're not living you're working and it's funny because obviously while i was raised like that like well, i'd say almost all of us all of you uh like yeah, all humans they're told almost the same uh, but no it's not true you you can be told differently by your teachers by your parents by your friends by your loved ones and all that and thing is that um, well I was trying to to do as told like everyone like when you're studying you keep your emotions you know tight and well like trying like erasing your emotions but I was never so good at well I'm good at mixing things and that's why I I talked a bit about my biography and I will be doing a some I'm good at mixing and it's funny because it's um, it's who I am in essence since I was born because my father is Swiss and my mother is Mexican and that's like a very contrasted mix very very contrasted mix a cultural mixture so I'm very good at mixing so obviously uh, while growing up and trying to not mix my feelings with my studying and with my working and all <laughs> it wouldn't work at all with me no matter how hard I try I would I would start talking about things or asking questions and uh, obviously that would be a problem in, in, in many occasions because I would be asking questions and saying things that let's say normal people wouldn't, wouldn't ask and all. And then that's when I started seeing that I would not fit very well in many environments. And that's why life brought me to, because it's really life brought me to create my own business, my own school, my own life, uh, my own world. And I still have a lot to do because I'm not married and I don't have children yet. But I'm going to that because it's a natural part of life. Okay, look at this. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. So, a quick check without the stones. Let's hide the stones for a second. And... Okay. So here, that's why I was saying, I was expecting a bit of this or that. But there I'm going to leave it like that because it means that that part of the ending is very thin. 
which might be a problem in the manufacturing process because that means that it's really thin or even already too thin but that be that can be corrected with uh, a lot of techniques and um, these are the stones all right so this is great now I need to hide the yang this yang I need to hide for a minute now I need all the prongs well we're ready with these prongs so what I'm going to do is that I won't take the first one so here also we can count the prongs if necessary 510 this is a really nice number okay we come here and we come uh, here then. okay so now we're going to join these guys perfect so I need the stones I need uh, let me see something here is this guy okay this is the yin hmm I'm going to copy it because this one has the cuts and all of that uh, I'm going to copy one because this one I'm going to transform to mesh but then if I need to correct something it's way better to have the original before before all the rest all right so we take these guys we make a shift D oops without moving without any snap so again shift T here we go now I need to run okay let's go up control a all transforms because I need to rotate this these friends 180 degrees and uh, here we are and also now these are yellow gold all right here yellow gold and there yellow gold all right so now let's just finish by setting these to black diamonds and here we are a yin yang pendant pave with honeycomb in two golds white gold yellow gold I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this video subscribe become members and uh, anything you need 3d modeling jewelry design jewelry send me an email you'll be most welcome be happy take care and see you soon